Okay, in this video, you're gonna learn three different methods for solving proportions. So you're probably learning about this in your class right now and you're wondering, you know, what is a proportion? How do I solve for the missing quantity? And that's what we're gonna talk about here. So first things first, a proportion, it's a ratio equal to another ratio. So what's a ratio? A ratio is basically when you're comparing two quantities. And usually we write a ratio as a fraction, like for example, uh, boys to girls, uh, students to teachers, you know, that sort of thing, you're comparing two quantities, but the two quantities, the two fractions are actually equal to each other. So an example would be like two thirds is equal to four sixths. You can see if we reduce uh, four sixths by dividing both sides by two, you can see this reduces to two thirds and that those are our equivalent. But sometimes what happens when you're solving a proportion is we don't know one of these quantities, right? We wanna figure out how do we find out what that unknown quantity is. So method number one, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say, well, these fractions are equal, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply this denominator, C7, I'm gonna multiply it by three so that it gives me this denominator over here on the right, 21. But when you multiply the denominator by a quantity, you have to multiply the numerator by that same quantity. So I'm gonna multiply the top also by three. So this is gonna end up being four times three, which is 12, and that's what X is, that's the unknown quantity. Now, if you're not convinced, you can always reduce this, 12 over 21, you can see that uh, three goes in here four times, and three goes into 21 seven times. So you can see when we reduce that fraction, just like we did at the beginning there, that they're equivalent, right? Okay, let's go to example number two. So here we've got nine over X equals one over four. Okay, so now in this example, I'm gonna actually go from the right side to the left side. So I'm gonna say if I take one times nine, I get nine. But if I do that to the numerator of this fraction here on the right, I have to do the same thing to the denominator and multiply by nine. Well, four times nine is 36, so that's our unknown quantity, x equals 36. Again, you can check if you reduce nine thirty-six, you're gonna get one fourth, so those are equivalent. Okay, last one, see if you can do this one, x divided by 30 equals seven divided by six. Okay, so here what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, well, I know six times five is 30. If I multiply the denominator by five, I have to multiply the numerator by five. So you can see seven times five gives us 35, and again, if you reduce 35 over 30, it's gonna be equivalent to seven six. Okay, so now this is not the most favorite method, but stay with me, we're gonna do two more uh, different techniques, and you can of course use the one that you like the best. So method number two, we've got nine over four equals x over seven. Our goal is to find that variable, that unknown, right? So what I'm gonna do here, when you see this fraction bar, that's the same thing as division or dividing, right? So the opposite of dividing by seven would be to multiply by seven. Of course, if you do this to the right side of the equation, you have to do it to the left side to keep it balanced. So you can see this is gonna end up being, uh, let's see, seven times nine is 63 over four. These are gonna cancel and that's our final result. So that's what X is. It didn't come out to a super uh, nice number, but again, our goal is to find out the unknown. Okay, let's look at example B here. So X divided by two equals five divided by eight. Our goal is to find out what this X is, right? So the opposite of dividing by two is to multiply by two. That way those are gonna cancel. If we do that to the left, we have to do it to the right. Now two is the same as two over one. You can always write a whole number as a fraction by putting it over one, right? So you can see we're getting five times two is 10. 8 times 1 is 8, and we can reduce 10 over 8 by dividing the top and bottom by 2, and that's going to give us 5 fourths, okay? So that's x in this example. Okay, last example of this type, 4 divided by x equals 20 divided by 12. Okay, now this is a little bit different problem, and because the variable's in the denominator, and one of the techniques, or one of the properties of proportions, I should say, is that you can take the reciprocal of both sides of the equation. So if I Flip this one over here on the left and make this x over four, that's gonna be the same thing as taking the reciprocal on the right, which is 12 over 20. So now, again, I'm gonna do the opposite of dividing by four. I'm gonna multiply both sides by four, okay? And what I'm gonna do on this one is a little bit uh, different. I'm gonna do some cross-reducing. So I'm gonna say four goes in here once, four goes into 25 times. So as long as you reduce numerator and denominator, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's in these two fractions or this fraction, this fraction, you can reduce like that on the diagonal. And so here you can see we're getting X equals 12 fifths and you got it. So one last example, and this is probably the most favorite way of solving proportions. Uh, but before I do that, I just wanna mention if you're enjoying my videos, you like my teaching style and you're learning algebra one, 
I've got a course called Learn Algebra One, and I go through all the different concepts that are covered in that course step by step with lots of examples, instruction, so that you can really grasp Algebra One. And uh, check out that course, I'll have uh, links to that. You can also check out the 13 free previews to see if it's a good fit for you and pick up some uh, pointers along the way as well. So, but last method, method number three, and that's that uh, we're gonna solve this by using the cross product method or the cross multiplying method, however you wanna say that. And the way this works is that this diagonal here multiplied together equals this diagonal here multiplied together. And what this does when you cross multiply is it gets rid of the fractions, okay, which a lot of times students don't like fractions. That might be, uh, might be your situation as well, but this gets rid of them for you. So basically this diagonal multiplied together, 10 times x, equals this diagonal multiplied together, which is 24. Now some students ask me, does it matter if I put the 10x here or the 10x here? It doesn't matter, it's just put the one diagonal on one side and then the other diagonal on the other side, right? And then the last step is we're trying to solve for x, but because these are right next to each other, that means they're multiplied together. What's the opposite of multiplying by 10? Of course, it would be to divide by 10, right? So we've got x equals 24 tenths, and 10 goes into 24, let's see, uh, two times with four left over, so that's two and four tenths, or, Four tenths, you can reduce to two fifths, so two and two fifths. Okay, see if you can try these other uh, two examples. I'll, we'll go through them. Okay, so here what I'm gonna do again is cross multiply, so that diagonal multiplied together equals that diagonal multiplied together. So we've got three x equals 28. Uh, divide both sides by three, okay, and you can see x equals 28 thirds. And if you want, you can write it as a mixed number. Three goes into 28 how many times? Uh, let's see, nine, that's 27 with one left over, so nine and one third, right? Okay, last one. Uh, again, multiplying on the diagonals, right? Three times nine is 27, equals 10 times x, divide both sides by 10, and 27 divided by 10 is equal to 2.7. When you divide by 10, you just move that decimal one place to the left, okay? If you're dividing by 100, you move it two places to the left. So my goal in all my videos, like I say, is to you know, really help you to understand math, boost your test scores and your grades, and hopefully make it a lot less stressful. So subscribe to the channel, check out more math tutoring videos on my YouTube channel, Mario's Math Tutoring, and I look forward to helping you in the future math videos. I'll talk to you soon.